SpaceX and Blue Origin are two companies founded at the beginning of this century. So far, the race between these two companies, what we often call the race between the tortoise and the hare, is still going on and showing no signs of stopping. With the mindset of a chaser, Blue Origin will have to find every way to catch up with its opponent. One of the ways in which they did, which has been noticed by many people, is to straight up copy what SpaceX is. The strong testament to this is Blue Origin's latest rocket, New Glenn, which is announced to debut for the first time at the end of this year. Well, we might underestimate New Glenn because it's produced by an aerospace company that's never had a rocket reach orbit. But honestly, New Glenn's a pretty interesting rocket, a formidable competitor that can compete on equal footing with SpaceX. So what makes this rocket extraordinary? First, we must mention its similarity to SpaceX's rocket. It wouldn't be an exaggeration that the New Glenn is a mini version of Starship. New Glenn can be reused by vertical landing method. Using methane as fuel, the rocket also has an extended landing leg with adjustable mesh fins like Starship's booster and plans to land on a drone ship like the Falcon 9 first day. Jeff Bezos did not stop his copying act as he continued to introduce the Jarvis project as the next stage of this rocket. This project was first made public in July 2021 as a fully reusable upper tier development for New Glenn. The Jarvis project includes storage tanks which aim to rapidly prototype propellant storage tanks to withstand the ordeal of multiple launches and re-entries. Indeed, the actual images seen at Blue Origin's launch complex of this project closely resemble SpaceX's SN4. This indicates a similar approach in terms of design and the goal of complete rocket reusability. Traditionally, the second stage of a rocket is expendable, meaning it's discarded after use, contributing to higher costs and resource consumption. By making the second stage reusable, Blue Origin aims to achieve significant cost savings and operational efficiency. This capability will allow New Glenn to compete more effectively in the commercial launch market, providing a more sustainable and economical option for various missions. However, Blue Origin's somewhat limited capabilities, such as a bright future, is in significant doubt because developing a reusable second stage for rockets is a very complex task. Unlike the first stage, which separates earlier in flight and undergoes less extreme conditions upon re-entry, the second stage must ensure the harsh environments of space and then survive a high-speed re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere. This involves advanced engineering to ensure the stage is structured integrity, thermal production, and precise control during descent and landing. Adding to the challenge is Blue Origin's current track record. Despite being a prominent player in the space industry, Blue Origin has yet to achieve an orbital launch. This gap in practical experience creates a substantial challenge as Blue Origin attempts to develop a reusable second stage for its rockets. Reaching orbit is a major milestone for any space company, even with conventional expendable rockets. It requires precise engineering, extensive testing, and a deep understanding of the extreme conditions encountered during ascent and orbital insertion. Blue Origin's lack of orbital launch success means they haven't yet demonstrated mastery of these fundamental challenges. So far, they're making a strong effort for change in this situation. New Glenn's expected to be a big hit for them. Engineers at Blue Origin have studied the use of stainless steel as a material for these tanks, just as SpaceX produces Starship since 2019, which makes it special compared to other rockets. Stainless steel is cheaper and is better to withstand the plasma-inducing heat from atmospheric re-entry, but its weight is roughly five times that of composite materials. Not only the propellant tank, but the BE-4 engine may also have the same change. With changes similar to Starship, Blue Origin wants to turn New Glenn into a counterweight that can compete with SpaceX in the future. Besides, Blue Origin has also made its own new developments in the upper stage design of the New Glenn rocket, utilizing an aerospike engine. The aerospike engine operates by using a central spike to shape the exhaust flow and maintain optimal performance at various altitudes. This contrasts with conventional engines typically optimized for specific altitudes. The unique design of the aerospike allows for stable performance from sea level to the vacuum of space, potentially offering significant efficiency benefits for rocket stages. The specific configuration of this aerospike engine includes small rocket nozzles called thrust modules arranged around the aerospike. These thrust modules are angled inward, allowing the curved surface of the aerospike to act as one of the nozzle while atmospheric pressure forms the other side. This configuration not only optimizes thrust efficiency, but also helps manage the associated thermal challenges. Alongside the advantages of the aerospike engine, Blue Origin's new Glenn second stage faces several technical challenges related to cooling during atmospheric re-entry. Unlike traditional bell nozzle engines, the aerospike engine's central spike helps shape the exhaust flow and maintain performance at various altitudes. However, this central spike is highly susceptible to intense heat 
during re-entry. Managing this thermal load is crucial for the engine's survival and reusability. Blue Origin has addressed this issue by truncating the aerospike, effectively shortening it to reduce exposure to extreme temperature. Additionally, this design includes a heat shield with holes to inject gas or propellant actively, cooling the spike and protecting it during re-entry. This approach, though innovative, adds complexity to the design and requires precise engineering to ensure reliability and effectiveness. The need for active cooling systems further complicates the design and increases weight, potentially affecting overall performance and payload capacity. The reusability of the design also hinges on the landing approach. For Blue Origin, using engines to land the second stage marks a significant departure from SpaceX's method with Starship, which re-enters the atmosphere belly first, then performs a foot maneuver for landing. Blue Origin's approach involves the thrust modules of the aerospike engine, which must operate effectively at sea level to enable controlled landing. The requirement for flexible engine performance across different flight stages adds further complexity to the design. In comparison, SpaceX's Bell Nozzle approach in Starship uses a combination of highly efficient vacuum engines and less efficient sea level engines. Starship primarily re-enters horizontally, protecting its rear-mounted engines with heat shields. This approach allows SpaceX to use specialized engines optimized for different flight stages, enhancing overall efficiency. Bell nozzles optimized for specific altitude offer high performance during ascent and efficient operation in a vacuum. Bell nozzle engines, while requiring additional protection during re-entry, benefit from well-established technology and simpler cooling requirements compared to aerospike designs. SpaceX's use of heat shields to protect engines during landing adds weight but ensures the engines remain operational for landing. This method has been proven in numerous tests and successful operational missions demonstrating its viability. Regarding aerospike engine performance, historically its efficiency has been debated when compared to conventional Bell nozzle rockets. For example, the Aerospike Engine XRS-2200 has a specific impulse of 339 seconds at sea level and 436 seconds in a vacuum. In practice, this efficiency is lower than that of the Space Shuttle's main engine, which can achieve 366 seconds at sea level and 452 seconds in a vacuum. This has led some to believe that the capabilities of the Aerospike are either overhyped or underdeveloped. This proves that despite the theoretical advantages of aerospike engines, they can fall short in practical efficiency, particularly in a vacuum where the specific impulse is most critical for the second stage of a rocket. These findings highlight the efficiency trade-offs between aerospike and bell nozzle engines. While aerospike engines offer theoretical advantages in adaptability and consistency, the practical challenges and lower specific impulse in a vacuum environment can significantly impact payload capacity. For Blue Origin's Project Jarvis, these efficiency considerations will be crucial in determining the viability and competitiveness of their reusable second stage design. Currently, Blue Origin has confirmed the launch schedule for New Glenn at the end of 2024. We will still wait to know if Blue Origin can succeed with what they have learned from SpaceX as well as their own unique designs. Although it is difficult for Blue Origin to defeat SpaceX at this time, even in the future, we still hope they can create something to help make the current race less boring due to SpaceX's dominance. Do you think Blue Origin can beat SpaceX with those ideas? Please leave your opinion in the comments section. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.